so who on, on this call is doing Google AdWords right now? So it looks like Harvey is, of course, Tim is, uh, Richard's just starting, um, Richard is, uh, Robert is, Kay is. So there's, there's a good amount of people on here who are doing Google AdWords. And who on here is, is leveraging search engine optimization or you want to be? And although this update, so it looks like, uh, Renda's just starting AdWords, Kathy's just starting it, Harvey wants to be leveraging SEO. So of course this update that Google made on February 4th, um, it, it was technically an AdWords update, you know, showing how many ads uh, show in the search results. But really when you boil it down, it was a Google search update. It was, it was updating the way that they deliver search results to people when they go to Google and type something in. And of course the whole overall experience when you go to a Google search, you see the organic listings and then you see ads. So while this was, you know, an, an, an AdWords update, it's also affects SEO. So, um, and, and we're not going to say it affects it in a negative way. We, I might do a call on that, you know, in another two or three months or so once we gather some more data, but I think it can open up some more opportunities for some people. And also it draws more eyes and more attention to the organic results because now you don't have those 10 ads cluttering the sidebar. Uh, there definitely could be some negatives because it bumps bumps organ organic down a spot or two, which we're going to go into. Uh, so even those of you who are not doing pay per click, this is still a very important update, and because there's some huge implications over for the future um, of, about what Google is doing to display their search results. So uh, I'm going to introduce Dan. Uh, Dan uh, Dan's the CEO of a company called AdWords Nerds, and I first heard about AdWords Nerds probably about a year ago because we kept on having customers coming in. And, uh, and saying, hey, I'm using Dan with AdWords. Notes. And so we connected probably three, four, five months back. I love what they're doing. Um, I love their, their, their take on their market leadership in that space. And, um, and they've been doing really great work for our clients that are working with them and just worked out really well where the timing was great for him. He could hop on here. And I guess I'm going to say timing was great with a caveat. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to mention this, Dan. I know you, you said you might not, uh, mention it before, but Dan and his wife, they just had a baby a couple of days ago. And, um, and so the timing was great for us to do this call with him, but not as, as ideal as it could possibly have been a family situation, but, uh, the baby's healthy and, uh, Dan was able to pull away for this lunch hour to dive in healthy guys. So welcome aboard, Dan. Uh, take it over, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that very much. I just, uh, you know, I got like an hour of sleep before the call is the first sleep I've had in like two days. So I don't know. This may go way off the rails, but I appreciate that uh, very, very much. Uh, yeah, guys, so thank you so much for, for being here on the webinar. It's I'm, This is my first webinar with Investor Care, and I'm so pumped because it, literally everybody we've ever worked with that came to us through Care or using Care is just super cool and uh, really fun to work with, and so you guys are some of my favorite folks, so I'm really excited to do this. Uh, yeah, and this webinar is all about the latest Google update. We're billing this right right as everything changed in AdWords on February 4th. Here is what you need to know to adapt and succeed, and that's exactly what we're going to get into. So I want to talk about really what you can expect to get out of this call, right? And I want to make sure that you guys hold me to this that I do this with you in this call. So if you've got questions at the end, if I didn't do any of this, I want to know about it, right? First thing, I want you to learn all about this latest major Google update, and, and this is a major change. Uh, some people out there are kind of like, eh, no, it is, a, it is a major change that you need to know about. So I want you to know exactly what to expect from that. I want you to know the background, you know, technically what's going to happen so you know what to, what to kind of look forward to. Then I want you to see what the data really says about whether this is a big deal for you or not, right? Uh, you know, I want you to actually know what the numbers are saying so that you can decide kind of where this falls for you and what you want to do about it, if you want to do anything about it at all, right? And then lastly, I want to give you five golden rules for adapting to this change and profiting because as my dad always used to tell me and uh, is something that I, I really take into heart, he says, uh, you know, pro all problems are opportunities in disguise and this is really the case with this. Uh, this was the kind of thing when... When I first heard about it, this sort of broke. Uh, it was like a couple days before my my wife was due to give birth. This sort of broke over the thing over over the the internet, right? And I sort of got texts from people I'm working with, and I'm reading about it. And I kind of had a sleepless night about it a little bit because obviously my whole business is based on AdWords, and it's a big change. And I, 
You know, but I came away from it thinking, you know, this this is going to be a problem for a lot of people, but it can be something that can be really powerful, really good for you as well, as long as you know what to expect and you know what to do about it. So that's what this whole webinar is about. It's about giving you those tools so you can come out ahead with this rather than being, you know, being uh, getting left behind, which I think is going to happen, unfortunately, to a lot of folks. So uh, I want to talk about this kind of Trevor and I. I sort of threw this in there. I, I know you guys are, are uh, familiar with Trevor, obviously, through Investor Carrot, but I want to talk a little bit about, about him because he's going to be running this webinar with me. Obviously, Trevor runs Investor Carrot, which is this amazing. And by the way, so I come from a web design background. I actually build and still build uh, custom websites for all sorts of clients. I've done that for years uh, I gotta say, Investor Carrot is an awesome, awesome product. It was the first, the first time I ever reached out to Trevor was to say, hey, by the way, we have been testing Investor Carrot sites in our business. We actually actively try to beat Investor Carrot all the time with our own designs. Uh, because, you know, we always want to improve. And consistently we find Investor Carrot to convert really, really highly, you know, significantly better than average. It's a really great product. So, you know, that's why I sort of reached out to Trevor initially, and, and it's just a really great company. You know, he's generated 88,000 uh, real estate leads online, I'm sure more by this point. He's been an investor himself since 2004, and is featured on Fox Business and Mashable and Huffington Post, and uh, I think was named People's uh, Sexiest CEO of the Year uh, in 2010. So it's just an awesome Awesome dude who knows this stuff. So it, it meant a lot for me to for, for Trevor to ask me to be on here, which is awesome. So uh, Trevor is the best. Uh, so you guys probably know Trevor. You may not know me. Uh, my name is Dan Barrett. I'm the founder of AdWords Nerds. Uh, we're a, a company that helps real estate investors get more leads with AdWords. That is literally all that we do. Um, some kind of cool stuff about us. We're the only certified Google partners, which is the, the highest level certification you can get as an AdWords agency. The only one of those that are uh, currently working exclusively with real estate investors. We are actually scored by Google in the top 10% of all ad AdWords agencies in terms of results and following best practices for clients. We've managed over a million dollars of client spend uh, in AdWords, and we work with some really well-known names in real estate investing, and, uh, you know, we're just deep, deep into this market. So we know our stuff on the AdWords side. We know our stuff on the real estate investing side, and so we're in a really unique spot to talk about this because no one is really talking about this right now in terms of how it specifically affects investors. So uh, it's, it's an honor to be able to do that, and it's really exciting to be able to kind of do this original work. So let's jump straight into it, right? So whenever Google makes a big change, we notice, right? These are algorithm changes, something that's kind of thrown out a lot or, uh, you know, sort of layout changes in Google. But these things, even small changes, can have huge effects on all sorts of different companies. So a lot of these changes, they get named by Google, right? So you probably may know some of these. If you're, if you're in, in this space at all, you may have heard of, like, the penguin algorithm update or the pirate update or the panda algorithm or the hummingbird algorithm or rank brain, which is their newest one. Um, so the question we were kind of batting around is like, what do we call this one? Because it doesn't have a cool name. And I'm going to go ahead and suggest that we actually call it the AdWords mullet. Okay, so this algorithm, we're calling it the AdWords mullet. Why do we call it the AdWords mullet? And, uh, oh, I just wanted to put this so Trevor decided to dress up for the <laughs> webinar. So this is him literally minutes before we went live in the webinar. Dude, I'm, rocking, I'm this. rocking that. Thing. I would have to I say. know. Yeah, you literally look like you could be in, like, Leonard Skinner or Queensryche or something. You know what I mean? I think it's, it's amazing. I don't know why your hair is so pixely while the rest of your face is normal. No. That must be the camera. I don't, you know, it, it's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> but, all right, so let's talk about it. why are we call it the AdWords mullet, man? Well, it's because it's business in the front and the back, but nothing on the sides, okay? So what does that mean technically? All right, well, there used to be three ads above the organic search results in Google with eight additional ad slots along the side, and that gave you 11 ads total. So, again, we used to have three on top and eight on the side. This is the way it used to look, right? This is just a random image I pulled online. I'm sure you've seen this. If you've been in Google ever, you got these ads on the top that get sort of this tan background, right? And then on the right, you got all these other ads that are alongside. If you guys are running AdWords ads right now, 
you know, when you run ads and you see your average position, this is what it's talking about, right? If I'm in position three, that means I'm the last ad on the top. If I'm in position four, it means I'm the first ad over on the right, okay? So that's the old setup. What this new kind of change has done is changed it so that there will now be three or four ads on top with nothing on the right, so no ads on the right-hand side. Instead of ads on the right-hand side, there are going to be four additional ads at the very bottom of the page, all the way below all of the organic search results. So the total available number of ad spots has gone from 11 to between 7 or 8, depending on what the search is. Okay, so this is the big change we're talking about, all right? There's three or four ads on the top, nothing on the right-hand side, and some ads at the very bottom. So this is kind of an example. I literally just Googled this right before I uh, came in here. I just searched for Sell My House CT. I'm in Connecticut. We can see we've got the four ads on top, and we've got kind of the organic results down at the bottom. There's more to this page. It just got cropped off by the That's, that's a care customer there, the first one organic, too. Hey, look, I didn't even do that on purpose. I had no idea. Look at that. First organic search results. So that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, and, like, obviously nothing on the side, right? So this is this is the big change, guys. That whole right-hand side area, which used to be, you know, not as great as being on top, but pretty useful, is now gone. All right. So that is the big change that we're talking about: the Google Muller, the AdWords Muller, right? Now Google has said that four ads will appear on the top of the page for highly commercialized searches. Remember when I was talking about what's going to be on the top? I said three or four. So highly commercialized searches are supposed to get four ads. Now, we have been seeing in most of our research four ads for most real estate investing searches, right? So the sell my house or the, you know, we buy houses or ugly houses or, you know, what it, you know sell my house fast or whatever you can think of. Most of those have been getting four ads on top. And we expect that to continue, but there's actually no guarantee that that will stay that way or that all of the keywords that you're targeting in your kind of REI AdWords account will get four ads. So it's something to keep in mind is that that's still sort of an, an unanswered question. We think most real estate investors are going to be able to get four ad spots, um, you know, up there, but we're not exactly sure that's going to be the same way. We have also been seeing, and this is rare, but we have been seeing some pages with no ads on top with ads on the bottom, or with only one or two ads on top with other ads at the bottom. And this is actually, just being completely honest, it's really unclear to us how this works, because theoretically, you know, if there's not a lot of competition, the, the ads from the bottom should all float up to the top to fill up all those top spots. And for some searches, we have not seen that happen. We are not sure how that works yet. Uh, the Google rep, you know, we, we have a dedicated Google rep uh, as a, um, uh, an AdWords agency that we can talk to and ask questions of. They uh, said that this wasn't supposed to be happening, so it does seem like there's actively some change going on now. This is a really new change. I think it was just last Friday that this started rolling out. So this is still in flux, but currently kind of what we expect to see is four ads on top, nothing on the side, and three or four ads on the bottom. Okay, so that is the change that we're talking about. So what should we expect from this? Right. This is a, a, a pretty big change. If you think about the, the total amount of ad space available to you guys has gone from 11 to 7, maybe 8. Uh, that's a pretty big change, pretty big change in a lot of people's strategy, big, pretty big change in, in the way that a lot of people are going to have to think about how they approach AdWords. So what is that actually going to mean to you? Right. What's the brass tax a result of that? So here's a couple things that we expect, okay? So we've got the ads on the top, but we also have these new ad spaces on the very bottom, all the way below all those organic search results. Now, we think those ads are going to get extremely low click-through rate. And if you're not uh, sort of familiar with the lingo, click-through rate is just the percentage of people that saw the ad and clicked on it, right? So, like, if, if 10 people saw your ad and one person clicked on it, you've got a 10% click-through rate. Okay, so your click-through rate, we think in those bottom ads, is going to be very, very, very low, significantly lower than the right-hand side ads used to get. And the reason is just that, like, most people don't end up scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the first page in Google, right? Google's pretty good at figuring out what you want to see at this point. So, you know, if you're Googling, like, local pizza joint, 
you very rarely have to get all the way down to the bottom to find what you want. And so our expectation is that those lower ad positions are going to get a very low number of clicks, much lower than the right-hand side ads used to get. Because of that, right, because there's less spots overall and because those bottom ads are going to be, you know, frankly, we think pretty worthless. We expect that competition for the top ad spots is going to increase, okay? The side ads aren't really a valid option anymore, and this still has to be borne out by data, but that's what we are thinking. So we think that the amount of competition for those top spots is even going to be more extreme than it used to be. The end result of that, right, is that we think that costs are going to go up, okay? We expect that cost per click are going to rise. We expect that cost per lead are going to rise in AdWords. Now, that may drive smaller, less well-managed competitors out of the market, which may stabilize prices a little bit as well. So basically what we expect to see in the next couple months is a fair amount of fluctuation, you know, prices going up or down, and then we're going to find what the new normal is, okay? But like everything that Google does, Google only did this because they thought it was going to get them more money, okay? Uh, there's a reason that Google is the company developing, uh, you know, self-driving cars and other companies are just struggling to survive, and that's because Google's really good at getting more money. So Google did this because they thought it was going to get them more advertising revenue, and after going over kind of what we think is going to happen, we think that's going to be backed up. So in general, we, sh we expect this, um, more competition and costs to go up. All right. Hey, Dan, let so, me throw yes. this in there really quick. Um, is the video working for everyone? There was a couple people who popped in here, uh, said the video wasn't working there. I just want to make sure that there's not an issue with GoToMeeting. Can you guys see Dan's slides? Okay, cool. Yes, so it looks like the video is fine. Um, yeah, so Alex, uh, you may – yeah, I'm not sure, man. It looks like it's It looks like it's just your – yeah, everyone, everyone else is saying it's working great in there. And so it looks like it must be something on your machine. Um yeah, maybe uh, maybe try to pop back out, restart your computer or something like that, but uh, it's working on our end, so I'll throw it back to you, Dan. Okay, all right, cool. So uh, I was going to put a funny image here of a dog on a phone. That's why it says dogs on phone image. Apparently I forgot that. So anyway, uh, because uh, there's a running joke that whenever we call Google, there's just a dog on the other line. I don't know why this became a joke with me, but it is. So in any case, we called our Google representative. We got a dedicated Google rep that I mentioned before, and we said, hey, uh, you know, we're a little worried about this for our clients. You know, is this going to cause costs to go up? And basically what Google told us is this is not a big deal. This isn't going to be a big deal. Your costs aren't going to go up that much. Don't worry about it because no one clicks on the side ads anyway. So the argument on this side, and a few people have kind of floated this out there in the industry. is like, well, look, the ads in the fourth, fifth, sixth position, which is over on the right-hand side, really didn't get any clicks to begin with. No one was clicking those ads anyway. So the fact that those go away is not really going to affect anybody's actual results. Um, and I actually thought that was sort of a weird uh, answer. So we decided to figure it out for ourselves. So here's what we did. We analyzed uh, over 44,829 different individual ads that we've run in the past two years. Okay, each of those ads all together account for hundreds of thousands of individual searches. All right, so we actually took each of those ads and we tracked their performance at every different position over time. Okay, so we said, how did this ad perform in spot one, in spot two, in spot three, in spot four, all the way down to spot eight. Okay, uh, we also calculated the overall profitability for each ad at every position using our real number system. The real number system is our in-house keyword grading system. It's basically, it spits out a three-digit number that helps to calculate profit generated from a keyword or an ad, okay? We could talk about that more. Uh, I, I didn't go super deep into detail in, in, in terms of that system because it gets a little technical. If someone has a question about it, we can talk about it. Um, I'm actually, too, I'm, I'm working on a, a, a really deep uh, study of keywords uh, for investor care that we're going to put up that's going to go into that in some detail as well. But in any case, so we you kind of track the profitability of each of these ads over time and then said, how does that position of that ad affect the profitability of it? 
right? Are we more profitable in position one? Is it true that when we run an ad on the right side, it's not profitable for us, okay? So here's what we found, and we're going to get into the data in a, in a fairly uh, deep way, but I want to kind of just give you the overview, all right? So first of all, click-through rate, which again is percentage of people that click on the ad, is definitely highest in the top positions. That is absolutely true. This is why that Google rep said no one clicks on the right side ads, okay? So it is true. If, you're, if your ad used to run in position one, you would get the highest click-through rate of all the ads. If your ad ran in position two, your click-through rate would be lower. If your ad ran in position three, it'd be lower than that, right? And, on, and onwards all the way down to the bottom of the page where your click-through rate would really drop off to practically nothing. But what we found was that profit was not necessarily highest at those positions, meaning that just because more people click the ad in the top position did not mean you would actually make more money running your ad there. Because here's a big thing to remember about AdWords, how AdWords works. As competition for a position rises, costs rise as well. And if the increase in the performance that you get from getting the top position ad doesn't justify your added cost, you will be less profitable. Right? So you don't want to just look at click-through rate. You don't want to just think about, well, if I run in the top spot, I get more clicks. What you have to think about is, does this add more profit to my bottom line? And much of the time, the top spot is not the most profitable spot. So let's kind of get into why that is, okay? So we broke our data down into both mobile and desktop traffic, okay? <clears throat> so for mobile ads, we found that position was at uh, profit was actually highest when we ran ads in positions three or positions four. For desktop, it was even lower where profit was highest in positions four and positions five. Now remember, in the old AdWords system, anything position four or higher was on the right-hand side. So what this now means is that some of our most profitable positions, and this is in real estate investing specifically, some of the most profitable positions for your ads are now going away or going to become much more competitive. So, for example, in this situation, right, four is now a top position ad, so we expect more competition for that spot, and five is just gone for good as a relatively competitive position. So, this is really important to understand. When someone says this isn't a big deal because no one clicks the right side ads, what they completely miss is that the right side ads were much cheaper to run. And so because they were so much cheaper, but they didn't drop off all that much in the real estate investing market, they were actually very often more profitable than the top position ads. This is something we see over and over and over. Uh, you know, kind of my background is before I came into real estate investing, I was doing AdWords for plumbers, and I did AdWords for coaches and uh, paramedic associations and all this stuff. Real estate investing has one of the weirdest AdWords markets in the world. Honestly, it's just really bizarre. A lot of things that people will say are kind of best practices or just accepted wisdom in other markets are not true in real estate investing. So most AdWords people will say, you know, it's the old truism, you always want to be in the top, you always want to be in the top. Well, at least in the past, that was not always true, okay? So that's the past. We realize that this is an issue now, right? We realize this is an issue now because some of those best positions are going away. So what actually happened when this change rolled out last week? So what we decided to do was after we found this data, we realized that we were losing some really valuable positions for our clients. We decided to closely watch what happened to our client accounts the week after the change occurred. So basically last Friday, was the announcement that it was rolling out worldwide. So we sort of marked that data on the calendar and said, we're going to keep track of the next week's worth of data, okay? Now, while we did intervene, because we actively manage our clients' accounts, we tried to keep our changes to a minimum where possible in order to see how the Google Mullet update is really going to change things, okay? So this is going to give us a sense of at least some of the changes that are going to happen to client accounts and to probably your account if you're running AdWords, um, in the sort of foreseeable future. Now, let me give you a big, big caveat to that. 
Much of these changes are still rippling through the internet and have yet to be felt. And there's also a lot of volatility in AdWords week to week anyway. In a lot, in a lot of ways, AdWords is kind of like the stock market where there's a lot of up and down week to week, but you know, over the year it's pretty steady. So I don't want you to take too, too much away from the, this week's worth of data, but it is interesting to look at and important to kind of think about what these changes are actually gonna do to average accounts. So we took all of our clients' data across all of our different clients averaged together, and this is what we saw. So average position went down about 26.22%. I think most of this is due to people that were on that line between the top spot and the right-hand side and are now basically just all the way down, right? So the fact that those positions kind of went away and then the increased competition came in to compete for those top spots pushed some people down, and I think largely that's where that change comes from. All right, click-through rate was, again, it's the percentage of people that um, clicked uh, onto the ad after seeing it was down 4.81%. Again, I think this is largely due to ads showing up at the bottom instead of the right. They lost that incremental click-through rate, and so their overall percentage dropped pretty heavily. 5%, almost 5% is a pretty steep decrease. The next one is supposed to say uh, cost per click. It just has a percentage. I'm sorry about that. That's a typo. So our cost per click was also down about 7.72%. So we actually ended up spending less for every click. And that's actually a good change. Again, I think that's largely because there was increased competition for the top spots, probably less competition for those bottom spots, which ended up decreasing our overall costs. Um, but that may just be a statistical fluctuation. In terms of unique number of leads, we were down about 1.38%. So actually not a huge change in the raw number of leads that we received, so that's not bad. The cost per lead was also down, so cost per lead uh, decreased about 1.18%. So we ended up paying less for leads. So overall, sort of a mixed picture. I think the big thing to take away is position data had a big fluctuation. Big fluctuation, right? Six times bigger fluctuation than any other number that we looked at. So it was really kind of all over the place. Click-through rate is also kind of all over the place with a significant change over the course of the week. We expect that to be up and down and all over the place over the next couple months. But it's interesting to kind of look at what's happening to some of the cost data uh, because that's actually kind of a, a silver lining to this change and something that's that's actually positive. So you never know. This is why we were saying it like could be positive, could be negative. There are going to be some changes that you can make to actually sort of use this stuff to help your account. So let's get into what you do about it, right? Because I think, uh, you know, we could talk about sort of all day about, you know, what these changes mean and what the data means, but eventually it's useless unless you get something you can do about it. So let's talk about that, all right? Because we expect to see increased competition and increased cost, I am recommending a two-pronged approach to dealing with this change, okay? The first step is you have to limit waste to control your potential downside, okay? The thing to take away from this is that if your account is running keywords that are kind of too expensive or wasteful, the potential cost to you of that waste is going to go up, right? It's like if you had like a hole in your pocket and all you were ever changing, you know, all you were ever carrying is, is change, right? And you got a little hole in your pocket, so every now and then you're losing a penny or you're losing a dime or whatever. Right? You're just kind of, it's a little, little hole that's sort of wasting money. If that hole gets bigger, and from now on your whole wallet can fall out of it, and that keeps happening, it's obviously much more valuable for you to sew the hole shut. Right? And similarly, what we're going to see now is that the value of plugging holes in your AdWords account, limiting your waste, is going to be much higher than it was. The other, the kind of flip side of that is that you need to bid wisely, okay? You need to make sure that you pay less of a penalty than your competition when you are bidding so you get more bang for your buck. This is all about bidding on the smart keywords, not going in with the shotgun approach, not going in and just saying, I'm going to bid $100 on every single keyword because while you may have been able to do that before, my guess is that you are going to get murdered if you try that now. Right? So we need to bid wisely, we need to be smart about where we put our money, just like we need to limit our overall waste. So let's get into kind of some specifics of what I mean when I talk about that, okay? These are Dan's golden rules, right? These are the golden rules for, for sort of managing this change. Rule number one is focus on your bids, 
Okay, we want to make really sure that we're bidding smart, we're bidding on the right stuff. So not all keywords are created equal. You need to focus on competing with your best performing keywords. You need to find the keywords that are your thoroughbreds, the keywords that are the your Mike Tyson of keywords that's just hanging out and just generating a ton of leads and being awesome and being really efficient. Those are the keywords you want to bid up and you want to be aggressive with. Okay. The other stuff that's kind of on the fence or isn't doing too well, you don't want to just throw more gas on that fire because it's going to blow up. It's going to spend a ton more money, especially in the next couple months when things are all over the place, and it's not going to get you the result that you want, right? So the other side of that is that you know a lot of people out there, they use scripts or they use automated rules that raise all of your bids across the board. But the penalty for doing that is much higher now because that makes it very likely that you're going to bet a lot on a loser, right? You're sitting at the, you know, you're sitting at the, you know, whatever. You're sitting at the card table, a poker table, and you're watching everybody, and, and you know, you're actually betting on who's going to win the poker hand. And this guy just get, loses every single round. It's just horrible, and he, you know, he's got huge glasses on. He can't even see the cards, and he just has no idea what he's doing. You don't want to just keep bidding on, you know, betting on that guy, putting on your money on that guy to win because it's going to really hurt you. You want to focus on the ones that are crushing it, your strongest keywords. That's where you're going to focus most of your time, focus most of your money. Now, rule number two is you need to cut your waste, which is, you know, in my terminology, is going to be your keywords that are spending money, but they're not really bringing in leads. You want to find and pause. Anything that is spending money without bringing in leads, because again, those keywords are probably going to start spending more as this change kind of ripples through, and so the penalty to, for you is going to be significantly higher. If you're running a huge number of keywords, there's a lot of people out there that run AdWords in the real estate investor world that will run accounts that have like thousands and thousands of keywords, okay? And that's cool if you've got a killer management team that is in there every day doing a ton of management. But if you are running AdWords yourself or you're running AdWords with a small team, I want you to really consider cutting down the raw number of keywords so you can reduce the risk of wasteful keywords just skyrocketing in cost. Because the problems come when you have like this this huge number of keywords, you can't really watch everything, something's going to start spending money and kind of run under the radar for a while, and it, it's going to really cost you. So run a smaller number of higher quality keywords, right? It's quality, not quantity. And if you have keywords that were just like, okay, they're doing all right, but are now underperforming with the change, you need to decide if you really need them rather than just always trying to bid them up, right? If you had a keyword that was like doing okay, but ever since the change, it's kind of like, man, it's looking a little old and it's kind of like walking slow. And You need to decide if it's really worth investing the money in and competing with that keyword or if you can just kind of let it go and pause it. Because, again, you want to put as much of your money as possible towards your money keywords, your best performing keywords. And you want to limit the amount of money you spend on keywords that are kind of like, you know, in the middle or, or, or are actively wasting your cash. Okay. Rule number three is we want to focus on phrase and exact match keywords, okay? You know, I don't want to get too much into the technical terminology. If you're familiar with uh, AdWords or if you've got someone managing it, they will know what this means. AdWords has a bunch of different match types that you can use for every individual keyword, and they control how Google uses that keyword to match you up with people that are searching. I only want you to bid up your broad match keywords if you have killed it. And I mean killed it with that keyword in the past. Because phrase and exact match keywords give you the highest cost efficiency per click, typically. And so if you focus your bids, you focus your higher bids, your, your more aggressive competition on those keywords, you're going to get more for your dollars. You're going to get more for your money. All right. So this is probably the most technical of all these rules. But if you're working with someone and it's managing your accounts for being there, just write this down and say, hey, I want to make sure we're focusing most of our bid dollars on phrase and exact match keywords because that gives you the most bang for your buck. Broad match keywords can be great. They can be good. I'm not saying they're always bad. I'm just saying that you have to really, really, really justify your spend on them in an environment like this where costs are going to go up because they tend to spend a lot of money and not necessarily generate a whole lot for you. 
Rule number four, we want to ramp up your negative keywords. Okay, negative keywords help to cut your waste and keep your costs low. Negative keywords are basically like saying, like, hey, Google, anytime someone searches for this word, I, I don't want to show up. I want you to not show my ad. Okay, so they help to keep your ads relevant. They help to make sure that the right people are seeing your ads. So I want to give you a goal. I want you to focus on adding new negative keywords every week for the next few months. You don't have to do this forever, but for the next few months, set aside like 30 minutes a week, 20 minutes a week, not even. Go into your account, look at what searches are pulling up your ads, and just add negative keywords to block the stuff you don't want. Okay? This is going to make, over time, your account more efficient and more efficient and more efficient. It's going to make you waste less and waste less and waste less. And sooner or later, you're going to get to the point where you are running so lean and mean that you'll have all this extra money that you can use to bid up those awesome keywords we were talking about earlier when we were talking about bidding on phrase and exact match and focusing on your best performers. The increased efficiency you get from doing stuff like this. And it's like it's it's hard because a lot of people don't do this stuff because it seems boring or you know it's not as kind of sexy as talking about what keywords you should target or maybe writing a new ad. But the increased efficiency you get from doing things like this helps you to compete for keywords that your competition thinks are too expensive. So over and over and over what we see when we do this kind of process with people is their competition is just scratching their heads thinking, I don't know how he is always beating me. I don't know how she is always ahead of me in the rankings. And it's because they're just running more, more efficiently. They're spending less so they can do more. So this kind of stuff really helps with that. All right. And finally, rule number five, you want to pay what you want for competitive keywords. You don't have to give up on an expensive but valuable keywords. Okay, you don't have if you have a keyword like let's say sell my house fast is costing you two hundred and fifty dollars a lead, and it's just like oh it used to be great but now it's too expensive. You don't have to give up on it. You can use something that we call the name your price technique. Now this is a whole separate thing, um, and it's too much to kind of get into this video. So I'm giving you this uh, the link to the video here. It's a separate video at, at adwordsnerds.com/price. Just adwordsnerds.com/price. That's a separate video. You can go there. You can watch the video we did on this. It's a fairly simple formula you can run that'll tell you. Basically, how to bid whatever you want so that you generate leads at the price that you want. So if your keyword's generating leads at 250 a lead and you want to bring that down to 100, we tell you how to do that. Okay, It's not without uh, downside, but it's very consistent, and it can help you to deal with some of these price changes. Right? As costs go up in AdWords, it doesn't mean that you stop competing in AdWords. It just means you have to compete more intelligently, that you have to make sure that you're only spending what you want, that you're not wasting money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, actually, I think that's the final thing. So what I wanted to say is if you guys have questions or want help, uh, there's a couple things you can do, right? So uh, we put up a site, uh, a page on our site, which is at adwordsnerds.com slash carrot. And basically what we do is we run a free trial for everybody that, that wants to see how this works. Uh, you always got to pay Google, but if you want us to kind of manage you for a month, set you up, see how it's going to affect your market, or if you're already running AdWords, you want us to take a stab at it, uh, we usually run a 37-day free trial. Just for the people on this webinar, we're adding on a week, so it's actually 44 days of completely free management, which is a $1,246 value. So we're running that. If you just want to talk with me about this, if you're just like, hey, you know, I don't know if I want to do the trial, but I have a question, I just want to talk with somebody, same page, you can come, you can request a consult. I'm happy to talk with you for free. You know, I'm not going to get you on the phone and be like, hey, you should buy a car for my cousin or anything. It just, it's going to be kind of about helping you as much as possible. Okay, so because I know the stuff that we covered in this webinar, it can be a bit technical. Uh, I know I talk really fast. I had like five shots of espresso and I haven't slept in two days. Uh, so I want to make sure that, you know, whatever your worries or concerns are, whatever they may be, uh, we can give you kind of real straight talk, uh, objective answers to that. Um, and, of course, guys, if you're watching this, you know that Investor Care is the one that hooked me up with you guys. And uh, I, I mentioned this before. I'm going to say this again. 
uh, we tested uh, investor carrot sites in, with AdWords traffic against literally dozens of different landing page variations that we designed and built. And investor carrot consistently beats out almost all of them. It is much uh, significantly higher converting than pretty much any other site we've ever tested. So they're an awesome, awesome solution if you're looking for a real estate investor site. But I think um, what we can do now is maybe open it up for questions or Trevor, if you, if you want to pop in and ask something or say something, uh, feel free. Um, but I want to make sure we've left enough time to kind of deal with kind of concerns or questions that people might have on the on no, the, the man, it's, this is perfect, man. I, I appreciate it. And hopefully, hopefully you guys took down some notes and like Dan's saying, um, AdWords, for those of you guys who are managing your own, I mean, that, that alone can be a, you know, a, a full-time job, just learning that and, and doing those things. But one thing I wanted to throw out there too is a lot of people might be going, okay, so, you know, what was, was this change just a, a money grab for Google? You know, was this change just, um, Google went out there and get more money? And, I think in the end, of course, Google, uh, they, they always are, are gearing things toward the, the better user experience, which in the end to them equals if there's a better user experience equals more money. Because right. the way that they get more money is by more people using Google. And uh, if you look at some of the other search, uh, some of the other search engines like Bing or Yahoo, you know, uh, some of those, even some of the kind of the lower tier ones, the reason Google really grabbed a hold of the market share you know, years and years and years ago is because the experience they're delivering to search uh, to people doing searches. They, they felt that, that they were delivering, you know, that the searchers felt that they were delivering the results that were the most relevant to what they were looking for. Now, let me kind of take this forward and kind of put some people's minds at ease. Some people are, might be asking, well, does this mean that they're moving more and more away from uh, organic results and more toward paid? Now uh, it's funny. I was, I was in a, I was in a Facebook um, uh, group conversation for a wholesaling uh, group in Facebook, wholesaling real estate group in Facebook. And one guy threw out the thing. He said, oh, SEO is dying. He said, you know, pretty, pretty soon Google's going to be all paid. And I, 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 I pulled back and go, you know what? Look, that's, I, I don't feel organic's ever going to die because without organic, the paid won't exist. You know, without, without quality organic listings, delivering, to people what it is that they need that's going to best answer their, their questions or whatever they're looking for. The people are not going to be, uh, the people are not going to be using Google anymore to search. So they, they have full incentive to make sure their organic listings are still insanely, still the, still the best. So put that, yeah. put, put that to, to rest for sure. And then I'll touch on the mobile side of things is one of the answers that Google is throwing out there too about these changes. Is they said that they want the, the desktop version of the results to more closely reflect the actuality in mobile results. And uh, one thing that we've reported a quite a bit, you know, quite a bit here at Investor Care is um, it was about a little over a year ago or right out a year ago, we hit this point with Investor Care where it finally tipped the scales to where more leads are coming in on mobile devices than on desktop across our whole platform. And, you know, we're talking tens of thousands of leads per month too. This isn't just a few leads here and this is tens of thousands of leads per month. Over 50% of all the leads now come off of, off of mobile and growing. The last time I looked, mm -hmm. I did a, a, a survey in the past six months worth of leads, you know, close to 100,000 opt-in leads, tens, you know, uh, tons more um, phone call leads. But uh, uh, it was something like 53% of all those leads came from cell phones. So what Google is seeing is they're seeing that the future is not mobile. They're seeing that the now is mobile. Okay, they're seeing mm -hmm. that. Right now, more people engage in Google on cell phones than a desktop. So they said, if that's the case, why, why do we continue to build and optimize for this, for this device that they feel is on the decline, the desktop computer? Now it's going to be years and years and years and years before that happens. But if you guys are not focusing on mobile, if you guys are not focusing on mobile and making sure your website performs at a high rate on mobile, um, like, like we're always focusing, if you guys are not focusing on mobile, and making sure that when you're running Facebook ads or if you're running Google ads that you guys are, that you guys are really thinking about the mobile experience. You go to your website and you, you click on your ad on the mobile device to see how it looks to people. Cause that's the way that Google's moving. And if you, if you look at the search results on mobile two, three months ago versus how our desktop results are now, they're very, very similar. So, uh, it, yeah. it's a, it's a move to keep organic relevant, but also make sure that they're moving to match mobile and desktop experiences. Yeah, I think it's I I think you're totally right. It is interesting. It's it's important to point out 
<clears throat> that this layout was already here on mobile, right? Mobile already just had, <clears throat> excuse me, the top ads and nothing on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. It's only desktop that's that sort of this is happening. It just so happens that there was always more competition in AdWords on desktop than there was in mobile. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that mobile wasn't valuable. In fact, it, Trevor's totally right that in many cases mobile was, was more valuable. There were just less people competing on it. So really we're seeing these two things kind of come together. Um, Trevor, it's interesting you're talking about the person that was saying, oh, you know, SEO, SEO is dead and, uh, you know, they're going to all paid. Uh, it, you know, I, I came from an SEO background. I did paid SEO for 10 years before we started doing this. Uh, SEO dies, quote unquote, dies pretty much every year. Uh, there's always somebody that's like, <laughs> SEO is dead. The death of SEO. Yeah, it's the yeah. report popping out every year or something. While, while yeah, we continue exactly. to crush it and generate a ton of leads through that source. So we're fine with it dying every year as long as it yeah, it's people away from it. <laughs> yeah, as long as it convinces other people not to do it anymore. That's right. Uh, and it, it's interesting because, you know, this this webinar, we've been focusing on real estate investing, obviously, and real estate investing. It is true that those four ad positions on top actually push the organic listings down a bit. And if you include things in there like your Google My Business listing and, and all that stuff, there's, there's a lot of stuff other than just straight up organic stuff in Google now. And that is that is different than it used to be. But um, for most searches, the, the vast majority of searches that are people do that people are doing, there's still only going to be three ads on top. Remember, it's only highly commercial searches that get four ads on top. So for most stuff, it's still going to be three ads, and there are going to be no ads on the right hand side. And so for the average person, there's actually fewer ads than. Uh, rather than more. So it isn't the case necessarily that, you know, Google's moving all paid and, um, you know, whatever. I think they did do the calculation to figure out that increased competition is good for them. But I, you're exactly right that Google needs to keep you coming back to Google, right? If you ever go on Google and you're like, this stinks, it's all ads, and you leave and you go over to Bing, Google is officially dying. And they are not going to let that happen anytime soon. So you're totally right. I, I think we can we can cut a little bit of the uh, of the worry uh, with those those two things, which are which are definitely the case. Yeah, totally. And there's a couple questions popping through here. Um, sure. Let's dive into these. So Josh uh, Josh Orndorf says, "What are your thoughts about being a sponsored link with Google, which is located on the side now compared to AdWords old side positions?" So I think so. Maybe he's talking about shopping ads or what are often called PLA ads, uh, which do still show up on the right hand side. I'm not aware of an ad type in Google that actually shows up still on the right hand side. There are, um, for example, some of the rank brain content. So things like Wikipedia entries or if you are using um, you know, you're using uh, a certain code on your site that lets Google scrape that site and display that code. Like, if you ever just Google, like, is Abraham Lincoln dead or something? It just kind of tells you directly in Google before you click on the site. That kind of stuff will still populate that space. Shopping ads will still populate that space. Um, but I didn't include any of that in here because, uh, you know, real estate investors don't tend to run those ads. Uh, if he knows of an ad type that's still showing up on the right hand side, I'd love to see that because we, we haven't seen uh, anything like that. Yep, and, and same thing here. We we have seen some content show up there, which was showing up before this change as well. Where you know, let's say you, you do a, a highly local search or even a search on your company name, and the Google local listings pop up there. Right. You know, oftentimes, the, the local <laughs> listing for your company or whatever it is will still pop up in that right side. So I'm not sure if that's that, that's what you're referencing. But yeah, if you have an example, shoot it shoot our way. We can take a look at it. Yeah, well, and that Google My Business stuff is incredibly valuable and awesome, and it's free. So if you guys don't have a Google My Business listing for your business, you should go get one. Uh, you can also tie that up to your AdWords account and uh, add a little map marker to your ads, which uh, extends the size of the ad and is generally really, really good to have. I love it. And, and guys, those of you who are Carrot members, if you have, if you have the three lead per day training, we have an entire section on setting up your Google My Business, um, optimizing it, things like that. So, um, yeah, if, if you have the three lead per day training, if you are a Carrot member, just dive into that section there. That's one of the first things that we suggest people do 
when you're starting to get your, your traffic generation going and set up that foundation and uh, the three lead per day walks you through it. Frank says, um, what's your monthly cost? Uh, what's your monthly cost? Because of course they can go through that link there, you know, adwordsnerds.com forward slash care and connect with you and, and get that extra week for free. But what, um, do your, what do your, your management, um, fees go like from there? Sure. So uh, we make it super, super simple. Uh, our rate is completely flat. We charge nine ninety seven a month, uh, and it, we do unlimited target markets, unlimited landing pages, unlimited ads, unlimited everything. So you really can't make us charge you more than that, uh, and it's all kind of lumped in there. And the uh, the other thing that's cool. So we're we're exclusive with every client in every market. So if you're in your market and you decide you want to work with us. Uh, we will never work with anyone that competes with you uh, as long as you're our client. So that's that's partially why we, we sort of fold all that stuff into our feet. No, that's perfect. And here, here's a follow-up from Harvey. So Harvey Harvey's one of our really active members in Southern California. Awesome investor. We're going to be able to connect next week for a few days. Uh, he's going to reach out to you, but he's asking, uh, do you do city-specific ads? And I think I know what you're meaning there, Harvey, but, um, okay, he says, meaning sell your Los Angeles house fast. Yes. Yeah, we do. So uh, <clears throat> when it's one of the things that we we always work on and test. We will always test a very a variation uh, that includes, um, you know. So we we call those localized ads. So sort of location names and stuff like that. Um, we will always test those. Typically, those do better than your average um, so ad without that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not always the case, ironically enough. And um, it just kind of depends on the account. But, yeah, but we always do those. Okay, cool. So a couple more questions here, and I'm actually going to change presenter back over to me for a second because I want to show something that's going to help answer one of these questions. Um, so, yeah, so Richard says, Dan, did you say you only take one client in a specific market at a time? Um, yes, yeah. So wherever, whenever we work with a client, we figure out the, the markets that they're competing in, um, and then they are our exclusive client for those markets. So we, we never do AdWords with anybody else in that market. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. It, for us, it's, it's primarily – it's actually a dumb – business move uh, because, you know, obviously we could make more money if we could work with everybody. But uh, for me, it's an ethical thing. Um, it's, it's, you know, working with two clients in the same market, it's kind of like playing chess against yourself. And uh, for us, we just always feel that it's very hard to do that fairly to everybody. So we're always exclusive uh, with everyone that we work with. Yep. Cool. So uh, Michelle asked a question because I mentioned on, on the, uh, on the Google My Business thing a bit a bit a bit ago, Michelle says, "How do we find the through the per day training?" So, Michelle, if you're if you're an investor carrot member, just log into your account. So, just go to oncarrot.com forward slash account or just oncarrot.com and click the sign in link there. When you're in there, you'll see a, a tab at the top that says trainings. If you click that, you can see the trainings that we have available. Uh, if you have the three lead per day, just go ahead and, and go to the three lead per day training right there, and it's going to walk you through this stuff. So, we have you know, bunches of sections on all the way from beginning. SEO to advanced SEO. You know, let's say we're going to go through to off-page SEO. We have an, we have entire modules in here and sections with checklists that go into everything. And uh, one of the one of the off-page things right here is right here setting up your Google My Business profile, optimizing your Google Plus local page, um, you know, claiming your citations, things like that. So these are all things that you can dive in here and do just one by one yourself, or have a virtual assistant do, or have someone in your office do, and things like that. But um, we we um, have our YouTube marketing one. We do have a pay per click uh, section that we're going to be building out even more here shortly, and then other things as well, outsourcing it through the. Internet. This is all for a hundred bucks because we want to make sure our training is affordable for all of our members because um, we know that when you have the plan to implement our websites, do a lot better job of converting that traffic when you actually get traffic to them. So yeah, yeah just go inside of your account and uh, check it out in there. And it's an awesome training. I actually, I actually uh, went through it when we when we first started uh, working with investors, and it's just really, really great stuff. Uh, and that's cool. And I don't get paid anything for saying that. I should probably. I should. I'll have. I'll have. Uh, I'll have Trevor slip me a five or something. There we go. Exactly. Yeah. A few more questions here, and then we'll get people on their way. Um. Okay, Taj. So yeah, Taj is asking about the Houston market. So the Houston market. It's obviously one of the most competitive markets in the country as far as for motivated house seller phrases. He says, do you guys have any input on the Houston market? I'm still trying to figure it out. And I guess let me let me help clarify that question, Taj. Um, 
and then I'll turn it over to Dan. But is there something specific that you want to input on? Is it on the pay-per-click side? Is it on the market in general? Is it on the SEO side? Kind of let us know what your specifics are, but I'll turn it over to Dan. Yeah, uh, it's funny because I don't – usually I can't remember. Uh, I have a horrible memory, so I kind of have to go through. But I, I do actually know a little bit about the Houston market because I actually had a coaching student – not a client, but a coaching student – uh, come through and uh, work with me, and I know that he uh, he did uh, ninety thousand dollars worth of deals off his first I think his first two months in AdWords, uh, which is I think I I think I literally like popped a bottle of champagne or whatever because that was really <laughs> cool. So the it, you, but you are exactly right. It's very competitive. So um, what I'm going to say is going to go. It's actually going to be uh, helpful for anybody that is a, in a competitive market. Okay, so because I can't necessarily like, you know, I, I, it's not like I know that the keyword, you know, sell my oil rig is going to do really well or anything. So there's nothing uh, super specific to Houston about this. But in general, when you are in a competitive market, by competitive, I mean it's either competitive in AdWords, meaning you've got a lot of people that are doing AdWords around you, or it's a competitive market, meaning the housing market is really good, you've got really high property values, which makes things harder for investors. This advice is going to go well in either of those situations. And often, like Houston, you have a situation where the property value is high and there's a lot of competition, which is just like the best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds, right? So here's how you deal with that. You have to be, especially if you're on a more limited budget, you know, if you don't have a lot of money to spend in AdWords, I mean, if you do, if you've got a ton of money, you can just play the money game. And that's that's when you just dump money on everyone until everyone dies, right? But if you don't want to play the money game, uh, which is not how I would do this, uh, you want to be specific. The way that you do this, and I'm going to cover this pretty quick, but I'm going to give you the, the basic idea. I want you to start with a very tight portfolio of keywords, by which I mean start with five to ten of what you think are the most specific, the highest quality keywords you can run. Just don't even do any keyword research. Think them off the top of your head. What are the people you're targeting going to type in here? Is it going to be, you know, sell my Houston home or sell my house Houston or whatever? Whatever you think it's going to be, make a list of five to ten. Run those keywords as modified broad match keywords, and you're going to run them for a couple weeks, okay? Don't spend a bunch of money. Maybe bid like five to ten bucks a click. Whatever, set your budget to whatever it is, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks a month, whatever you, whatever you want to do, set it, let it run. Then pause them so you're not spending any money. What I want you to do is then come back and look at your search terms report, which is in AdWords, right? That's going to tell you what people search for that pulled up your ad. I want you to go through that report and pull out all the keywords that you think are interesting and I want you to target them as exact match keywords, meaning the most specific, the most limited, the most focused possible version of those keywords you can target. And I want you to bid hard for those. Don't bid hard on anything else. Bid hard on your exact match keywords. And do that over and over and over again until you have a portfolio of the leanest and meanest exact match keywords you could possibly generate specific to your market. If you do that over and over and over and over again, what you're going to do is constantly cap your downside so you're not blowing a bunch of money out the window, but you are building this incredibly specific portfolio of keywords that are going to be so specific and so highly targeted that most of your competition isn't even going to know about them, much less be able to compete effectively for them. And that's the core of uh, the process that I'll usually teach people because it's the best combination of Competing in a really competitive market while also making sure that you don't end up spending a ton of money because that can happen very quickly. Um, the only other thing I'll say is whenever I talk about budget in AdWords, I always say the right amount of money is the amount of money you could spend for six months before you get a single deal. So don't, if you're like, look, I've got $2,000 to spend for, for marketing and I need to do a deal in order to keep paying for AdWords, I want you to spread that $2,000 out. Because the most important thing uh, to remember in order to be successful in AdWords is to test and test and test and improve and improve and improve. And you can't do that in a week or a month. You've got to spread that process out. And if that means spending less money per month so that you can do it, do it. Does that make sense? I hope that's helpful.
No, man, that was, that, that was huge. <laughs> that was huge. Hopefully you guys were taking notes on that. And also that, that shows the value of having someone who knows what they're doing, who, who <laughs> does this for a living to manage that stuff so you can do it. Um, so you can do what you do best. And one thing I want to kind of piggyback on is you talked budgets. So there's a couple of uh, budget questions in here. Um, mm. I think it's a good time to kind of transition over that since where you, that's where you kind of just, um, mention. I'm going to try to find this one here. Da, da, da. Let's see. Where'd it go? There we go. And uh, Doug, I saw your question, man. We'll, we'll bring that up here in a second. Anyway, I can't find, find that one again. Again, But anyway, guys, this is a huge thing. Um, I was talking to a carrot member. This is probably six months ago. And he's an active investor and stuff, but he, he launched his pay-per-click campaigns. He had someone managing it. He launched his pay-per-click campaigns. And after the first month, he gave up on it. And the reason for it is because he kind of blew through his budget all in the first month. And and that's completely the different mind, the, the wrong mindset when you start any kind of marketing. So let's say you're doing direct mail. Now there's a gal in, in a, in um, a Facebook group called wholesaling houses full time. And she said, uh, she posted a post in there. So she said, um, I sent out 250 postcards last week. I've got uh, two replies uh, and no deals yet. I'm thinking about stopping. Should I do a second mailing? And the first thing I'm looking at going is okay. Number one, you didn't send out enough postcards. Um, and so you need to kind of up your budget there and up you know, in, in your expectations. But number two, she needs to really commit to, let's say, rather than 250 bucks for her campaign at a buck a piece, she needs to commit to $1,500 or $2,000 to make direct mail work. And like Dan is saying, then spread it out over multiple mailings and try some different things. Because if you blow it all, if you blow your entire budget in the first month, you're going to be really defeated. Number one and number two, you're not going to have that time or cash ability to then figure out what does work and ramp it up. Um, I was talking with another carrot member on one of our mastermind calls uh, just recently, and we were bringing up the budget topic. And um, and he actually mentioned, he said, he said, well, for me, uh, he goes, because uh, there was someone else in the call who, who after their first $700 in AdWords, they gave up. They stopped because they were managing it themselves. They really didn't know what they were doing. They stopped. And uh, they, they thought it just didn't work. And this guy said, no, you got to keep it going. He said, we, we, spent, a, we spent over $1,500 in just click costs. Before we ever closed our first deal, but that first deal netted us twelve thousand. So if that person would have had, would have said, you know what, I'm just budgeting six hundred bucks per month, and then they give up after after two months of it, he never would have had that ten or twelve thousand dollar profit. So make sure you're really treating this like a business, not just like, hey, I've got five hundred bucks in the bank account, I'm going to give this a try. It's like really build up enough to to make it to matter, to have a budget. You can't compete in, in the Houston market with a hundred dollar budget, so you are going to have to build something up. Um, a hundred dollar total budget. Uh, so kind of take that, take Dan's advice there. Um, and then one person's asking, uh, let me see here. It was, it was Quentin says, how do you get in the map section when you search? So as I was searching around, you know, here's this map section. It's kind of the Google, you know, local listings. And the way that you get in there, man, is in this, this call is not on this. I'll show you where to find the information to learn it is if you're a carrot member, go to the three lead per day training, um, go to, the module about the Google My Business. Okay, so go to go to off page SEO and you have to get your, your business listed in, in Google My Business as a as a Google local business. And you put your address in there, things like that. We'll walk you through exactly how to do it, how to get verified in there. Um everything's just very simple. Videos in here walks you through it all. Okay, it's gonna walk you through step by step. That's how you do it. And there are some certain some certain things that can help you rank higher in a Google My Business listing. You know, some of them are if you have an active my business, if you, if you have an active profile and you have reviews, that can be a positive thing for you. You know, if you verified your website, um, if you have certain keyword phrases that that are related to the phrase you typed in. So you can see here I typed in the, we, the phrase we buy houses fast Houston. This person's company name happens to be we, we buy uh, Houston houses fast or at least that's what they put as their company name. So there are some variables and then we teach you, uh, them to you in that training. You know? uh, we just don't have time to go into it today. Um, let's see, uh, there's a bunch of questions in here. Some of these are kind of more ones that we should put off to another call or just connect directly with Dan on. Um, okay. This question here on carrot madman says, does the three lead per day come with, um, the 99 a month package website deal? So the three lead per day is actually, um, a, an optional training that you can purchase, uh, by itself. Uh, so it's something that we update quarterly. We put a lot of resources and energy into it. And it's only 99 bucks. It's a one-time charge, and we do update it very often. So you would just go into your Carrot account, go to the trainings, 
you'll be able to see three leaf per day there. It's only a hundred bucks one time and you'll have access to it, uh, including all of our updates. So it's not included in, in any of our plans. Um, unless you purchased carrot through one of our bundle offers on a, on a webinar. Um, otherwise you can always upgrade it at any time for just a hundred bucks. Uh, this is a great question. So Jeff says, if we're only doing a $600 a month AdWords spend, um, can we still take the 44 day trial with you, Dan? So, uh, if, if their budget 600 a month and, and they're looking at the AdWords management being, of course, $997 a month, um, right. does it make sense for a client to do that? So, yes and no. Okay. So I'll say, I'll say yes and no. Uh, first of all, $600 a month is a totally valid budget, right? It's just going to require a certain strategy. You have a different strategy than the guy that's spending $1,000 a day. Right. Uh, so, um, so that's totally fine. Just outside of that. In terms of management, um, usually we would ask that you spend around two thousand dollars a month uh, for, for budget. You don't have to spend that, but that's an OK budget for you for AdWords in order to take you on as a, as a trial um, for people on this webinar. I'm more than happy to, to waive that rule. OK. Uh, and still do the trial with you guys, because, again, we, we I mean, I'm not I'm, I'm not just saying that I'm not making it up. I want to work with more carrot people because I really like carrot people. Uh, and I don't like everybody in the entire world, right? So it's like it's really nice for us to kind of like work with folks that we like. So, you know, don't worry about that necessarily if you're thinking about doing the free trial. The thing that I would say to think about is you don't want to pay me $1,000 a month if your budget is $600 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. The the reason that we usually ask for a two thousand dollar budget, it's, it's not to make us feel good. It's so that your management fee uh, is paying for a certain amount of work and that work is going to get a certain ROI. Right. So we always say when we work with someone, we want to get at least three times ROI on what they pay us. Right. So if you're paying us, you know, twelve thousand dollars a year, we need to make sure that you're going to make at least thirty six. OK. And the problem with smaller budgets is it's not that you don't get value out of it. You do. But I am less sure about your capability of getting that three times return on your investment with us. Right now, you know, even if you don't want to work with us, the trial has some value because you get the data out of it. Uh, you know, really, the reason we do the trial with folks is so that we can sit down at the end of the month. You and I can have a conversation and be like, hey, what do your numbers say? Like, what's your click through rate look like? How much competition do you have? What are costs look like? What do I think it's going to cost you to do a deal? Uh, what do I think it's going to cost you to get a lead? You know, I, I'll know the answers to those questions after that month. And then I can make an objective uh, recommendation on whether you should do AdWords or not, you know, what your budget should be, you know, how important it's going to be to you. And if you feel like working together after that, that's awesome. But, uh, you know, you at least get that very objective take. And, and I am... And not a salesy guy. So if I think like, hey, you know, six hundred dollars is great, but I don't think it makes sense to hire us. I will tell you that, and I tell people that all the time. So um, that's my take on that. I think you know, for me, uh, anything more than fifty percent of what you're spending on ads to pay to a manager is too much. Mm -hmm. And if you're spending below a thousand dollars, a lot of the times, I think it's it can be more valuable to learn to manage it yourself if you think that's at all possible. Um, but if you're curious, or you just want to know, fill out the thing. And we'd be happy to talk with you, and, and we'll be very upfront with you the whole time. That's that's perfect. And and, and for those of you, because there are some questions in here that you, you can definitely tell that the person may or may not be ready to to hire a you know a high end uh, AdWords management uh, person inside of our marketplace as well. We've aligned with a a local company. If you're in a smaller market, um, this this type of AdWords management plan doesn't work as well. If you're in a bigger market like a Houston or something with significant searches. But uh, inside of our marketplace, we do have a lower price option that is a little bit more automated, which has its pros and cons. It gets the price down, but also there's some things where you don't get that high touch. You don't get the high strategy with that, but it can work in smaller markets. Just reach out to us there. Um, right. But then the, the other thing is I know a lot of people who have just taken the time to learn pay-per-click themselves. Now, do, do they know it as well as someone who does it full time? You know, the answer I think is probably definitely no. But could learning it yourself for for now get you to the point to where you're getting some some results where you then feel comfortable handing it off to someone because you're seeing some results and maybe turning a deal or two? I think the answer there is definitely yes if you're in that camp. So 
Um, inside of the three lead per day training, we do have our pay per click training, which we are going to be beefing up here in a little bit with some other things we're going to be adding, retargeting to it, and things like that. <clears throat> but you can go in here to the three lead per day training, go in here and and learn pay per click marketing pretty darn well. It's gonna it's gonna give you a really really great base foundation. Then as you start to implement the pay-per-click marketing side of things, you can always come to our weekly mastermind calls if you're a content pro member. Come to our weekly mastermind calls and say, hey, I implemented this. Here's what I did. Here's what my campaigns are. You can share with us your campaign. So, so um, our full-time traffic guy on my team, Brendan, um, can dive in and look at it. And we'll give you recommendations. That's all included in your content pro plan. So. If you do want to, if you're at a spot where you can't hire um, a full-time AdWords manager who does this for a living, who's amazing at it, um, you can tackle it by yourself to start, learn it through here, and then as you get ready, then you can connect with Dan or connect with with Matt, um, uh, uh, one of the guys that, that we recommend also. So there's definitely a path for everyone here, for sure. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So let me, let's answer this one, Doug. So Doug says, when I did AdWords, Google will give me notices that my carrot site was not optimized for mobile. I know it is, but uh, keep getting the notices. Please speak about that. So first of all, Doug, could you send through the URL of that carrot site, please? Because um, we have found, we have found, um, we, we, we have found that uh, uh, sometimes people have changed certain things in their carrot sites that made the text, you know, smaller than it normally would have been, or they added this in there, they changed that, or... Uh, whatever there, there are certain things that you can tweak in the carrot sites that would then make it not um, in, in Google's eyes quote unquote mobile optimized so send that through to me because all of our site template you know thingies by by default um, all pass the Google test so send that through to me if you could okay so sell my Jacksonville house now let me just pull it up really quick and Dan have you ever seen when you're when you guys are running paper click campaigns have you seen you get those notices from Google sometimes and um, when, when you know that the website is is uh, optimized correctly, yeah, uh, we do every now and then. And it hasn't happened a ton lately, um, but in general, like Google will uh, throw off a lot of errors uh, for, for most folks that are not necessarily based in reality. So, my favorite one is. Um, if you've ever kind of run AdWords or whatever, sometimes when you're looking at a keyword, you'll see a little error that says, like, not an error, but a little warning that says, this keyword isn't on the first page, right? And meanwhile, the position of the keyword was, like, 1.1, like it was the, top, was the top one. And so, you know, we always say that, like, you know, Google's, all that stuff, it's just computers, right? And computers screw up all the time. So I think the, the best way to check to see if you really have a problem um, and I'll give you a specific thing that you can do right now. You go into your account, right? Look at all your campaigns. And when you're looking at your campaigns, there's a little drop down menu somewhere near the top there that says segment. Okay. You can pull down a segment. You can look at the, all, all your data segmented in a bunch of different ways. And one of those is by device. So you'll have, you know, if you're looking at it normally, it says these are your campaigns, click through rate, your, your average cost per conversion and all that stuff. Well, if you look at the segment by device, you can see it broken down for desktop, mobile, and by tablet. Mm -hmm. And if you really do have a problem, if your site really isn't set up well for mobile, what you will see is a significant drop-off in conversion rate on mobile, but not necessarily a significant drop-off in click-through rate. Because what's happening is same or more percentage of the people are clicking on your ad when they're on a mobile device, but they are leaving your page in higher numbers because it's not good for them to fill out on their device. And if you see that, that's when you know you have a problem. Google tells you a problem. It's like it's good to look into it. But if you're, like, absolutely sure that Google's being dumb, it's very possible that Google's being dumb. You can uh, reach out. There is a – if you just Google – uh, AdWords support phone number. There is actually a phone number you can call. You can call them up and say, like, hey, I see this error here. Can you go through this with me and help me out? And they are usually very helpful. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that's great. And Doug, there's a couple things on here that after this call, we'll reach out to you that I do want to update anyway. Um, I'm not a fan of, of having that background image on that spot. So that's something I would definitely remove. I think having it behind there is fine. Then this little piece of text here, I see that. 
is a little bit smaller than normal. So we'll dive in and make sure it's the right size. That alone, this little piece of text here, since it's smaller for some reason, that alone could be the thing that's triggering um, that thing for us. So we'll take a look at it. And if we'll update that, we'll update this. If you go back and see if that, if that changed it, that'd be awesome. Um, and there's a couple other things too that, that I want to throw out here is, is, um, we're, we're always innovating on the mobile side in a big way. And, and literally one, one of the things on my list today is, um, is going through our new designs. We've been testing lots of different designs lately, guys and gals. And the reason that we haven't rolled out a whole lot of new innovations on the design side in the past year is because literally we haven't been able to beat our current stuff. And, we don't, we don't roll stuff out just for the heck of rolling it out. We have to roll it out based on results. That's just kind of one of our, one of our core values and one of the things that we follow is we don't roll stuff out just to make it look pretty. We roll it out based on performance and that we want to make sure that we're making your life easier, not just giving you more options to choose from that are crappy. So we've been um, running a bunch of testing and we found some things to, to perform better. Here's one of our designs that's performing comparably to our current, but at least we'll give people a different a different look and feel. Um, so this runs comparably to our current. Um, on some sites, it could perform lower. Some sites, about the same. Some sites, very slight margin, but we feel it'll be good enough to roll out to people where it's not lowering your performance, but it gives you a different option uh, on way to, ways to look at things. So let me show you this one, if I can find it. Um, and th this, is, this one's working very well on mobile, not that one. This one's working very well on mobile. Okay, I'm going to find it here. I'm going to find it. Okay, there we go. So the color on this one currently is green. Now you can, with the click of a mouse and this new rollout that we're going to be putting out this in, in March, you're going to be able to swap the image, the color, stuff like that. But this format's working very, very well on mobile right now for us because it's very simple. It stacks everything on there. And this would be an option for you guys to switch over to sometime in the next 30 days if you're a care member to test out. Now, we're not going to say it's going to increase your performance. We're going to say we have tested it across two to three dozen websites, here's what we found, test it on your own to see if it helps boost performance in your market. Because some of the websites at lower performance, but more often than not, it increased the performance of, of the websites we tested on. So anyway, there's gonna be some new cool things that's gonna really help innovate on the mobile side of things. So if you are getting that, that error still dug, you know, next week, um, once we roll this stuff out, you can switch over to this other site and see what happens. All right, cool. Um, Charles says, uh, is that, uh, let's see, was that our website, Charles, or Carrots? I'm sorry, was that Dan's website, Charles, or Carrots? Because uh, Charles said, okay, cool. It's working on my end, man, so you might just go back. Um, Dan, Charles saying that, uh, says the server is not working, won't allow him to sign up. So you might check that out, check that puppy out. Uh, Charles, either way, maybe check back in an hour and um, and just make sure it's there. It might be something on your browser. It could be a little hiccup or whatever, but either way, Dan will get you taken care of. So let me. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check it right now for you. Okay, awesome. Let me answer, let's answer one more question, guys, guys, and we'll get going. I know Dan's, uh, his time is valuable today with a brand new baby. We want to get him back with the family. And uh, he uh, had, had to pull some favors, I'm sure, to, to, to be able to come over here, but um, it sounds like his, yes. his wife was wife was glad to glad to get you out of there for a little bit so she could spend some time with the with the little one too. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Brandon, as far as as far as Dan's support, Dan's whole team is is in in the states. He doesn't have anyone overseas. As far as Google support. It's whatever phone number is on their website, man. I, I don't know of a, one that is going to guarantee to get you a, a U.S. person. Um, but uh, just keep calling the phone numbers. Uh, da, 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 da. And then Michelle, Michelle, that question, if you can reach out to support, support at oncare.com, uh, send that question through to them. I'll send it through to them as well, and they'll help you on that. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to there, but if you can dig into them, they will help you out. Or just come over here to oncare.com. Pop up a live chat and shoot and shoot that into there, Jake on the team or Alex or um, Adrian or whoever the heck is on chat right now. We'll be able to help you out with out with that. Okay, perfect. Um, da, da, da. And then this is the last question we'll answer, guys and gals. I know there's some more in here, but yeah, reach out to Dan guys um, at AdwardsNerds.com forward slash carrot if you want to get that extra seven days. Um, in management free. You don't get that anywhere else. So you have to go to the AdwordsNerds.com forward slash carrot and submit there to get that. You can connect with Dan. 
But last question here. That's a really good question. Uh, Brandon says, um, and he says he's, he's really convinced in organic, um, far superior to ads. Now, here's the thing. He says, you have convinced me that organic SEO is far superior to my ads. My numbers bear this out and that I got 40 ad clicks and 860 organic clicks plus AdWords is rampant, click, click, click fraud, lawsuits, blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing. And then he asked a question at the end. So I want to throw this out there to kind of combat part of that because for me, it's not the, it's not an either or. It's not do AdWords or do SEO or do SEO or do AdWords or do direct mail or online. It's finding what works best for you in that point in your business to stack on and scale up the marketing that's going to help you get a return on investment. Now, you're probably getting really, really good clicks and stuff from organic because you busted your butt getting ranked well. Okay, which congratulations to you. You busted your butt getting ranked well for phrases. Um, and, you know, of course, as, as the data has shown, um, and we'll see how it, how, how it kind of shakes out even after this change, but, you know, 30 to 40% of all clicks, um, on a search, go to the first organic position, cut that in half, uh, to go to organic number two, cut that in half again, go to organic number three. Before this change, the first AdWords position, on average, you know, across multiple industries, not really specific to real estate, would get six to seven, six to eight percent of the clicks and on down from there. So, Either way, organic could possibly help you get more traffic for that one specific keyword phrase. Now, one of the benefits of AdWords is you can today have your ad in front of uh, keyword searches, you know, for thousands of phrases if you wanted to. Uh, it's obviously a lot harder, more time, time consuming to get organically ranked for hundreds, dozens, or thousands of phrases. It's going to take some time. So for me, it's kind of just feeling it out. Where are you in that path? What makes sense? There might be certain keyword phrases that you want to keep on bidding on and keep on advertising for for AdWords that are just working and just make sense. Um, it's my philosophy as well that if you are ranked number one, two, or three in organic, that it makes sense to also bid for the, the paid uh, version of it. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to say that that's a for sure every time, but we have found in many circumstances we actually get a lift in the number of leads and the overall over, over, overall ROI we have from that campaign when we have our website up there twice. That's uh, something to test. But oh, absolutely. That, that's that been borne out by a lot of different uh, studies and stuff. The, the incremental increase in click uh, for both is better than either one or the other. Exactly. Uh, so why don't you bring up um, the, the part about click fraud because this is something that's not new. It's mm -hmm. been around ever since AdWords has been around. Um, and honestly, we run some AdWords stuff and we've never really had an issue with it, but in your experience, have you guys seen a whole lot of that stuff? Uh, no, we don't see a lot of it, but I, I will say that almost everybody we work with mentions it. So it is, it is something that's on a lot of people's minds and it, it does happen. Um, so here's typically what I'll say, right? One is that it's actually not as common as people think it is. Um, so, for example, like if, you're, if your competitor is doing research and they type in sell my house because they want to see their own site and they see your ad and they click on your ad to check out your page, that's not considered fraud. That's mm -hmm. something you want to check on a page just for the wrong reason, right, for you, right? But that's not fraud. It's fraud when they decide to click on your site over and over and over again to drive up your costs. This has happened maybe twice uh, since we've been working with investors. Uh, we literally had one but uh, one person who was um, filling out our client's form, and they're literally like the email they'd put in is like, waste your money at like, you know, forget you.org or whatever. Like they're really being blatant sure. about it. Um, but that's very, very rare. So if you think that's happening to you, However, you have options because you have to realize that Google is terrified of click fraud because if you think that click fraud is so rampant that you don't give Google your money, Google loses, right? They want you to know that click fraud is deal withable, to, for lack of a better term, right? So they've, you've got two primary ways you can deal with that. Uh, one is that if you think you are getting fraudulent clicks, you can and should go to Google, call Google up, email Google, whoever you got to do, report what uh, report fraudulent clicks or what's often called an invalid click. Because most of the time, Google will do a little research, typically take about a week, and if they they agree with you, they will refund your money. And why, what I will say is that they refund for those clicks more often than not in our experience. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually, if you think this is happening a lot, what I'd like you to do is go uh, get any sort of site tracking 
piece of code like Google Analytics or SiteTracker.com or whatever. Pop it on your page and track the IP addresses that are landing on your page. If you spot the same one showing up over and over and over again and you think that's the fraudulent one, you can go to Google and say, hey, I would like to ban this IP address from seeing my ads. So if that's your competitor, what will happen is that competitor will just see your ads disappear from Google, and they won't be able to click on you anymore. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have both of those things open to you, uh, and we do actively track all that stuff and look for it. We don't really need to do it all that much um, because it's just not that common. I uh, A couple of weeks ago, I suggested, uh, I thought it was kind of funny. I'm never, no one's ever done this. We've never done this, but I thought this would be funny. If, if you have a particularly tough group of competition, uh, what I would do is I would write an article called, like, uh, you know, my top secrets for, com you know, killing it in the Houston market or whatever. And I'd get an email list of, like, my, my biggest competitors, and I'd mail it to them and be like, hey, guys, I'm getting out of the game. I want you to see all my top secrets or whatever. I'm only saying this to you guys. And then just track all the IP addresses that click on it and ban them all from seeing your ads, like, before you even start. Uh, that's a little insane. No one's ever done that to my knowledge. But uh, in, in, in actuality, it, it's not going to be. So, for example, waste is a much bigger problem than fraud is. But if you are in a particular market, some people are just surrounded by jerks. And they do get a lot of clicks. So in those cases, look for those, petition to Google to get those refunded to your account, and watch those IP addresses and try to get them banned from seeing your ads. And that, that'll cut down on that a lot. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and also, I mean, there's really that kind of activity in any type of marketing. You know, there's, there's people I've seen taking people's bandit signs down and putting theirs up. There's people I've seen uh, taking people's direct mail, you know, doing wacky things with it. There's um, uh, Craigslist. Uh, Craigslist still works very, very well. And there's a question, Mike, actually Mike, myself and, and Alex um, are, are tackling that today. So that exact question you asked about our Craigslist training, we're tackling that today. I'm going to have it done um, for sure in the next couple of weeks. And we actually had a, an outsourcer who was going to help us with some things. They actually ended up bailing and that put us back about a month. So we're going to be tackling this week. But anyway, Craigslist, Craigslist works great. But there's certain markets where there's just people over there flagging everything. So I think it's just you just have to know that no matter what type of marketing you do, you're going to have some of those situations. It's, it's it's just making sure that they don't scare you away from methods that could be putting more money in your pocket. So now uh, he asked the question about Facebook ads as well. I'll, I'll answer it and then um, and then we'll we'll get out of here. But he's asking is is Facebook ads starting to surpass Google AdWords? Now we are seeing I think it's the number four source of leads through Investor Care is Facebook Mobile right now. Okay, and the reason for that, and we're talking lead volume. And the reason for that, that's behind SEO, that's behind, um, you know, that's behind some direct stuff. So people putting it on direct mail and people going directly to a website. Google AdWords is number five or number six in our, in our, um, our servers anyway. And, uh, Facebook Mobile is number four, I think, three or four. And the reason for that is the type of lead. So we're finding that you can get sellers out of there, but it's harder. Um, what, what works really well for, for Facebook, and we are going to be creating a training on this, is uh, buyers. We're finding a lot of success getting qualified buyers through Facebook, uh, rent to own tenants. We're, we're getting a lot of success um, generating those types of leads. And of course, those types of leads are easier to generate. So that's that's why you see a higher volume. Um, but we are seeing success in the past uh, several months doing what's called retargeting on Facebook specifically. And uh, we are going to be doing a mastermind call on that topic uh, Adrian's going to be leading it because he's been re running Facebook retargeting on his own websites for the past month and a half or two. And once we get some more data, we're going to roll it out. We'll roll out a training and go from there. So Facebook can work very well. Uh, you definitely aren't going to get the type of um, focus, lead, and volume uh, for sellers in our experience as you will with AdWords or SEO or things like that. But you can tap into buyers very effectively and rent to own tenants very effectively. Um, cool. Yep, for sure. Kathy, we don't have that training yet, but we're going to be getting it. So anyway, guys and gals, uh, if there's anything else you guys want to know on the pay-per-click side, reach out to Dan directly and just go to adwordsnerds.com forward slash carrot. That's where you'll be able to get access to this 44-day free trial. And before before everyone goes over there, um, or if you're not a carrot member, like I said, we'd love for you guys to be a part of our community if, if you feel it's a fit. But before you go over there and submit your information, I want to make sure that we're respecting Dan's time, that we're all, you know, Dan just had a new baby and he has a team. So it's not just going to be him. His team's working on stuff still. 
But I want to respect also your guys' own time and expectations. Um, Dan is insanely, insanely generous to be offering a uh, free trial like this. When you look at um, most other pay-per-click management services, there's an upfront fee and things like that. Um, most of not all of them. Or you have to pay for that first month up front, which there's nothing wrong with that. If the, if the person's good, oftentimes it's worth it. But what I want to make sure is, is that this free trial is not being abused. So if anyone has any intentions whatsoever on signing up, having AdWords, you know, having them run your stuff for 44 days and bailing, I really, really suggest you please don't sign up for this. Okay. Because we want to make sure that everyone who is going through this uh, trial with Dan, if you feel like you want to work with Dan on the AdWords, you're going through it with the intention of continuing the service with him um, as, as long as it looks like everything's working, right? Um, mm-hmm. We don't want you getting some good leads and then bailing and saying, oh, my budget's gone or whatever. So make sure that when you have to talk with Dan, you're, you're real yourself about the budget you're setting out. You're setting out enough budget to have success. And also you're real yourself that, hey, you know, as long as uh, these guys are good guys and, and they do what they say and they're managing things, well, I'm going to continue the service after the trial. Um, okay, so just make sure. Uh, don't go in there if you 100% know I'm just going to do this and get free AdWords management for 45 days in bail. Please don't do that. That's not cool, and that's not what this is for. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, I'll leave it with that. But Dan, do you have any parting words before we go, man? No, man. It was a it was a real pleasure. I, I, I thank you and and thanks to everybody watching for having me. It was it was a real blast. Uh, I've got. A, uh, my wife just texted me and was like, "Where are you?" Uh, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna literally run straight out of here to the hospital. But uh, yeah, I, I really appreciated it, and uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to kind of meeting and talking with people and everything. So uh, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Thank you for the amazing content, dude. We'll have you on for sure. Um, yeah, go back and spend time with the family and, and everyone. Uh, thank you guys for taking a little bit out of your Wednesday to hop on with us for this call. Hopefully you've got some things to implement now. If you're doing Google AdWords, you've got some things to implement in your campaigns to make sure you're not wasting money, to make sure you're targeting the right things, to make sure you're adjusting to these Google changes. Uh, if you're not doing uh, Google AdWords, now you have a lot more information that will give you a better glimpse of whether Google AdWords is going to be a fit for you. Um, and also if you're focused on Google organic, hopefully you've kind of put yourself, put your mind to rest that these changes are not attacking organic. If anything, it's helping to strengthen the overall experience even more. Um, we're just going to have to find better ways and, and certain things to, to make sure that our websites stand out, you know, now that there's a few more sites above us on, on the search spot. So, uh, keep on going out there and implementing guys. Keep on hitting us with questions. If you're a carrot member, show up to the mastermind calls every week. Tuesdays at 11 o'clock Pacific time and ask those questions. Ask those very specific questions. Hey, this is what's happened in my AdWords account. Can you take a look at it? Hey, I'm ranked number nine in this position on Google. What do I need to do to get higher? That's what those mastermind calls are for. We're going to dive in and help you do that stuff included in your content pro plan if you're a member and go from there. So everyone have an amazing, amazing Wednesday. Uh, start off March strong, hit this month hard, and uh, roll into April and, and just, just get, get that momentum going. Okay, we're here for you. Dan's here for you on the pay-per-click side. Reach out to them at wordsearns.com forward slash carrot and have an amazing week, guys. Thank you.